Because it's two point three lies between two and three, the least integer greater than the given number two point three is going to be three. So always we need to take the number on the right side. So whatever the number is given to you, just try to understand about where the number lies between two, what two integers it lies, and always take the number on the right side. The greatest integral value is to be taken on the left side. The least integral value is to be taken on, taken on the right side. So here is very easy. Instead of going with the number line, always to go with the number on the right side. Say for example, if I ask you what's the least integral value of 4.3, the least integral value of 4.3 is going to be the number on the right side number line. So 4.3 lies between 4 and 5, and Above 5 you have got many integers 5, 6, 7 and so on but among them the least integer is going to be 5. So least integral value of uh, 4 point is going to be 5. So always you need to take an integer on the right side of it. Here this is valid for any real number line between two given numbers. Say if I ask you about minus 3.2, observe carefully minus 3.2 lies between minus 3 and minus 2, minus 3 and minus 2. So here minus 3 point sorry minus 3 point lies between minus 3 and minus 4 so you get minus 3.2. So minus 3 point lies between minus 3 and minus 4. Always you need to write the number which is onto the right side of the number. So that is going to be the least integer the number. So you get minus 3. So in this case minus 3 point you get minus 3. So in the previous case the step value of the greatest integral value of uh, x. Uh, I said you if it is a positive number if it is a positive number I asked to write the number in great integral part of the number directly whereas if it is a negative number I asked you to write the number in this way like you know if I have got uh, say minus 4.2 what is the greatest integer less than equal to the number is going to be minus 5. So in this case what you do is take the integral part of uh, the number and add a minus 1 to it to get the greatest integral value of the negative number. Here exactly same of what you do is if it is the least integral value of some number as so what you do is if it is a positive number take the integral part of it and add a 1 to it you get the number the least integral value of number. If it is a negative number simply take the number what you have that is going to be minus 3. So if you have got a negative number write the number as it is like the number what is lying in the integral part. Uh, and whereas if it is of uh, a positive number always add 1 to the integral part of the number that gives the number or otherwise go ahead with the number line and least integral value always lies to the right side of it and the greatest integral value lies towards the left side. So that is the reason the definition of it says that if the number x lies between n and n plus 1 including can be n plus 1 also no issues the least integral value of it is going to be always n plus 1 that is number to the right side. So this is what the definition says about. So I have told you about what is the least integral value of the variable x. Now because we have seen the least integral value of x let us see some properties of least integral value of x. So let us see about the properties of least integral value of x. The first property is nothing but like you know the same way how we have done the past like if, uh, if uh, the first property if it is a number inside the uh, uh, least integral value of x if a number given here is going to be integer then obviously the least integral value of x is going to remain the same that is maybe greatest integral value of x or maybe small maybe the least integral value of x both are going to remain as x only in a case if uh, x is going to be an integer. That means if I ask you about the least integral value of 3 it is going to be 3. The greatest integral value of 3 is also going to be 3. So whenever the value of x is going to be an integer then the least integral value of x and the greatest integral value of x is going to be remain the same thing. So there is no change in it. Coming for the second property. The second property says that here this is exactly same way like you know the least integral value of x plus i x plus i whenever we have got a uh, uh, expression like in the form of x plus i then obviously we can separate the integer aside and can take the least integral value of x and you can add the integer. 
how it happened like in the previous case. So we have gone through some example in the previous case also exactly same way. Here if you have got some number, if the integer can be separated, then you can take the separate integer separately like go with some example. So if I want to find the, if I want to find the least integral value of 4.3, the answer for it is going to be 5 because the number to the right side, the integer to the right side is going to be 5. So obviously this least integral value of 4.3 is going to be 5. Now this 4.3 I can write it as say x plus i. So in, I want to write as x plus integer that means I can write it as say 0 plus 1 point 0.3 plus 4 or I can write it as say 1.3 point 0.3 plus uh, 3 or I can write it as say 2.3 point 0.3 plus 2. Observe carefully here if I separate it that is based upon the property if I want to separate the integer i then the least uh, integral value of to be taken only for 0 0.3 not for the integer means it can be written as least integral value of 0 0.3 because this 4 is integer we can get 4 out of the bracket. So in the same way here also you can take it as integral value of least integral value of 1.3 plus 3 can be brought out of the bracket. So same way here also least integral value of 3 plus 2 can be brought out of the bracket. So now what is going to be the least integral value of 0 0.3? The least integral value of 0 0.3 is the number to the right side of the number line. So least integer to the number to the right side line is going to be 1. So 1 plus 4 is going to be equal to 5. And same way, the least integral value of 1.3 is going to be 2. So we get 2 plus 3 is going to be equals to 5. Exactly same way, if we want to go with the least integral value of 2.3, it is going to be 3. And 3 plus 2 is going to be equal to 5. So whatever you do, it, you do take it uh, sum directly and get the result either in that way or apply this property, applying this property we can get the integer out of the bracket so that we can simplify it, the result is going to remain the same. So here in this case, so we can apply the property. This property can be applied either with the greatest integral value of x or you can apply it with the least integral value of x. So, so if it is of a, this kind of common property what you have in the greatest integral function and also greatest least integral function. Now coming for the third one. like. If they ask you about how to solve a least integral value of x equation, say for example, I have a equation of the form least integral value of x is equal to a, how we are going to solve the equation. So in this case, here it is nothing but a equation solving like a least integral value of x is equal to some integer, say for example, say integral value of s, this integral value of x is goes to a, where a is going to be, so for example say 3 if I take, so what are the numbers that are going to satisfy this in equation, equation, so if I take the numbers say 3, now what are the numbers that are going to satisfy this equation, now let me take some number below 2, uh, below 3 and uh, above 3, so if I take the integers as 2 and 4, now which numbers are going to satisfy this equation, say if I take say number right from 3, if I take 3, the step of 3 mean at least integral value of 3 is going to be 3. So 3 is going to satisfy the equation. So if I take some number on the left side say 2.9 or 2.1 something like that. If I take 2.1, the integral least integral value of 2.1 is also 3. So it's going to satisfy the equation whereas 2 will not satisfy the equation. So any number between 2 and 3 including 3 but not 2 is going to satisfy the equation. Therefore, therefore the value of x is going to be any number, any number between, any number between 2 and 3 including 3. It is nothing but going to be the formula like you know n less than x less than or equal to n plus 1. So it is exactly same way, it is going to be a less than x less than or equal to a plus 1 where a is going to be an integer. So if you have got a least integral value of uh, x function equation then the result of that, uh, the solution of that particular value of the x is going to be lying between a and a plus 1 including a plus 1. Let us go ahead with the uh, inequations of the type less than or greater than type. Say if I take least integral value of x less than some integer i, what is going to be the solution for it? So let us solve it by using the example. If I take least integral value of x less than say 3 where right side contains the integer. Now what is going to be the solution for this inequation? So for which I take a number line, I take a number 3, I take 2 and as well as 4. Now what are the values of x which are going to satisfy this inequation? So if I take number 3, 
3 if I take integral or least integral value of 3 is going to be 3, but 3 is not less than 3. So, 3 will not satisfy the equation. So, what numbers are going to satisfy the equation? Does the number less than that means like say 2.1 something like that does it satisfy the equation? So, least integral value of 2.1 is not <coughs> 2 is going to be 3. So, any value more than 2 is going to be more than 3. So, it is not such an equation, but if I take the number 2, if I take the number 2 say least integral value of 2 is going to be 2 and 2 is less than 3. So, any number less than 2 is going to satisfy this any equation, but a number more than 2 cannot satisfy the equation that means the solution for it is going to be x less than or equal to 2. So, whenever such kind of any equation comes where the right hand side is the integer then the solution is going to be x less than or equal to the integer minus 1 the integer minus 1 gives you that 2 here. So, integer minus 1 means going to give you i minus 1. So, this is going to be the solution for the least integral value or equa in equation of less than type. If I have got say least integral value of function which less than or equal to i then what is going to be the solution for it. In this case let me just take the same example, but with less than or equal to say same draw the number line with 3 and a number below 3 and number above 3 and integer above 3. Same it integer is going to be 4. So, now what numbers are going to satisfy this in equation? If I take number 3 here, 3 is going to satisfy the equation because least integral value of 3 is going to be equal to 3. So, 3 is less than or equal to 3. So, 3 is going to satisfy this in equation. Whereas, if I take a number more than 3 say 3.1 or 3.5 like that. So, if I take 3.5, 3.5 least integral value of 3.5 is 4. 4 cannot be less than 3. So, I cannot take a number more than 3 does not satisfy an equation. So, any number less than 3 is going to satisfy an equation including 3. So, all the numbers less than or equal to 3 are going to satisfy the in equation. So, solution of this in equation is going to be x less than or equal to 3. So, finally, we can say that the solution for this kind of in equation is going to be x less than or equal to i. So, it remains the same. So, without the bracket. So, coming for the next uh, in equation is going to be least integral value of x it is strictly greater than i. If such kind of in equation is given to you then how do you solve the such kind of in equation. Let us go through some example say least integral value of x greater than say 4. So, what are the numbers which are going to satisfy this in equation let us take 4 and let us take a 5 let us take a 3. Now, let us start substituting the values into the in equation. If I take any number right, right from 3 onwards of course, if, if, if I take 4 the least integral value of 4 is going to be 4, 4 cannot be greater than 4. So, 4 does not satisfy an equation. If I take any number more than 4 like 4.5 kind of thing 4.5 least integral value of 4.5 is 5, 5 is going to satisfy an equation. So, 4 does not satisfy an equation, but any number more than 4 is going to satisfy an equation. That means, if I take 4.1 least integral value of 4.1 is 5. So, 5 is going to be greater than 4. So, any number more than 4 is going to satisfy the in equation. So, so the general solution for step uh, least integral value of x greater than i is written as x greater than i. And finally, if I take the last one that is going to be least integral value of x greater than or equal to i what is going to be the solution for it. If I take least integral value of i least integral value of x greater than or equal to i what do we get here is we get say greater than or equal to 4. So, what is going to be the solution for it? Because I have taken greater than or equal to 4. So, 4 also will satisfy the equation. So, what are the numbers that is going to give you the answer 4 are going to satisfy an equation. So, if I start taking say 3.5 if I take 3.5 least integral value of 3.5 is 4. So, 4 is going to be greater than or equal to 4. So, any number more than 3 any number more than 3 say 3.1 least integral value of 3.1 is 4. So, 4 is going to be greater than or equal to 4. So, any number greater than 3 is going to satisfy this in equation. So, x is going to be greater than strictly greater than 3 anyhow 3 does not satisfy. So, x should be greater than 3. So, the answer for it so kind of solution is the solution for the in equation is going to be x greater than x strictly greater than 1 less than the integer is going to be i minus 1. So, 1 less than the integer. So, I get i minus 1. 
So these are the general properties of the least integral value of function and we have got the problems related to that. So the problems what we have in our in will do some examples here by based upon its properties. So I will go ahead with the example example 1 least integral value of x greater than 3. So evaluate. So second one least integral value of x greater than or equal to 4 and third one least integral value of x less than 2 and the next one is the least integral value of x less than or equals to 3. So what are the solutions for these inequations? Observe them carefully and they are in one of these forms. So applying one of these properties you can get the solution for this inequation. Least integral value of x uh, greater than 3 strictly greater than 3 is going to be the type number 6. So when we apply the property here we get the result as x is greater than 3. A same way if I take the second one the x is uh, least integral value of x like greater than or equal to 4 greater than or equal to 4 is going to be a question number uh, property number 7 type. So the solution for it is going to be x greater than i minus 1. So x greater than i minus 1 that is going to be x greater than 3. Coming for the third one. Uh, least integral value of x less than 2 it is going to be the type number 4. So, we get x is less than or equal to i minus 1. So, we get x is less than or equal to 2 minus 1 we get x is less than or equal to 1 and finally x less than or equal to 3 is going to be type number 5 where the solution for it is going to be x less than or equal to i. So, we get x less than or equal to 3 and finally these least integral value of uh, inequations are going to be solved in this manner. Now let us say about what is going to be the least integer function.